This video is brought to you by Straight Goods News, Canada's alternative online news source. Visit straightgoods.ca. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for coming. We're here to talk about a broken promise, about a commitment that Stephen Harper made to Canadians that when he said that he would come and clean up Ottawa and end the backroom favours to political insiders and friends. Canadians know that handing out jobs based on who you know or how, instead of how qualified you are, is just wrong. But Mr. Harper seems to have... Que Ottawa la transforme, transformé. Today I will step, I will lay out some of the examples of how far over the line Mr. Harper and his cabinet have stepped. He needs to live up to the promise for what he was elected. Mr. Harper, quite simply, you need to stop doing so many political favours for your friends. Let's look at Michelle Lalonde, who was appointed to the Parole Board of Canada this month, former policy advisor to the Prime Minister, or Stephen Harper's close personal friends, Angela and John Weissenberger, recently appointed to the Board of Directors of the Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation and the Board of Directors for the Canada Foundation for Innovation, respectively. Now, Mr. Harper was the MC at their wedding. I'm sorry, Mr. Prime Minister, but juicy patronage jobs should not be handed out as belated wedding presents. How about a nice crystal bowl next time? Mr. Harper's willingness to break the rules is sending a clear message to his cabinet. We have Peter McKay, former staffer, Kevin McAdam, who was appointed director of ACOA, and they promptly sent him off for two years of work, two years off work, on full pay for language training. And this is a minister who has the nerve to tell Canadians to tighten their belts. Or there's Reginald Bowers, appointed to a six-year term to the Canada, Newfoundland and Labrador Offshore Petroleum Board. And what area is his expertise? Oh yes, he was a campaign manager for Peter Pan. Perhaps the most disturbing situation we see surrounds all the rumours about a potential move of Vic Tays being given a patronage ticket out of Ottawa by being appointed to the bench in Manitoba. The Manitoba Judicial Advisory Committee will play a big role in determining this appointment. And it just so happens that Conservatives have been stuffing this committee with political friends. We have Jonathan Lyon, the Chief of Staff to the Manitoba PC Leader, John Tropiak, who sits on the Manitoba Conservatives Provincial Leadership Committee, and also a generous donation to the Federal Conservatives, and of course Marnie Larkin, whose company did $9,450 worth of business with Vic Taves in the last election. She's also the co-chair of the Provincial Conservative Campaign for Manitoba. Let's be clear about this. Conservative appointees, some with direct financial links to Vic Taves, could play a role in determining whether Vic Taves gets a judicial appointment. This is unacceptable. Patronage is a rot that is affecting Canada's trust in public institutions. If this appointment went ahead, it could plunge a committee that was designed to put judicial appointments at arm's length from political favours into the centre of a patronage scandal. Vic Taves, you must come clean with Canadians. You need to tell us that you're not planning to feather your political bed, that you have no intention of undermining the judiciary of Manitoba by inserting yourself as a patronage candidate. La reality, c'est que les conservateurs ont érigé un système pour que les conservateurs nomment des conservateurs afin ce que si nomment et leur tout des conservateurs. Tout ceci est clairement inacceptable. Ce genre de nomination partisane mine la confiance des Canadiens envers les institutions politiques. And so, where does that bring us today? The Prime Minister is ultimately responsible, and he was the one who ran on a promise of setting up a public appointments commission. Now, we all remember in 2006 when his, his choice was rejected by committee that he pouted and refused to move ahead. But he said at the time that he needed a majority to fix this problem. Well, Mr. Harper, you have your majority, so where is the action on ending pork barrel appointments? We're calling as a New Democratic Party on this government, Mr. Harper, to live up to this promise. A public appointments commission is needed to weed out inappropriate hires. It's needed to ensure that people who are chosen to work for the public interest are not picked simply because they flipped pancakes at conservative fundraisers. Now, we understand that the Public Appointments Commission will not solve every problem, but it will bring transparency to the process, and it will send a signal to Canadians that politicians are more than willing to take any questions. Thank you.
Congress, I'm just wondering what you think of uh, the Deputy uh, Prime Minister's Deputy Chief of Staff, Mr. Van Stone, uh, being hired by Air Canada. I'm wondering if uh, you wonder how it got past the Ethics Commissioner, considering that uh, he's a de facto head of lobbying for Air Canada, but he says he won't be lobbying. Well, what we're seeing here is, uh, again, the old boys club, the revolving door. It's a nudge-nudge, wink-wink system that you have a senior advisor to the Prime Minister who will just happen to be now coming back as a political, as the uh, the man opening the doors for Air Canada. Uh, this is what Mr. Harper said he would clean up, and he hasn't. In fact, he seems to have opened the door for his staff, for his friends, to carry on like this. It's not acceptable. Uh, Marie Vestel of Le Devoir. Hi, Mr. Angus. Uh, you say you want to give them a chance to do it, even though you don't expect that they will create this uh, commission. Um, so what's the point? I, I, I mean, you, you just, you're asking them to do this. It would be surprising for them to accept your recommendation. So what are you expecting out of this, other than a publicity? Well, the issue here is about a political lie to the Canadian people, about a prime minister who told Canadians that he would clean up the patronage cesspool in Ottawa because Canadians were fed up with it. And a prime minister who's ignored that, uh, who has who's done flagrant abuse of patronage. So it's a choice, and we're offering Mr. Harper this choice. You can either work with us and mend your ways, or you need to come clean with Canadians and say, I have no intention of running an ethical government. This is a question for the Prime Minister. We're offering him a way of fixing this, but if he doesn't fix this, then he's sending a clear message that he will be accountable to the Canadian people in 2015. Uh, I have a question myself, Mr. Angus. Uh, this Public Appointments Commission you're calling for, uh, how would this differ from the Public Service Commission that we already have that is supposed to be in charge of keeping uh, the bureaucracy from being politicized? The um, Prime Minister set up an office for the Public Appoints Commission that was one of the key promises made under um, when we brought in the Accountability Act. It's never been staffed. Uh, it sat there dormant. They finally just shut it down. The problem is, though, without uh, a, a standalone public appointments commission, you're going to get friends of the party, people who flip pancakes, people who are friends of the prime minister, get appointed to jobs that they shouldn't be given. And as long as that's happening, then uh, Canadians' trust in the political institutions of this country will be further undermined.